YouTube, what is going on? Crowder here, and today I am bringing you guys the max FPS Warzone settings while also making your game look good on top of some controller settings to help you out with some aiming tips and all that as well. Let's get into it. First off, we are going to be going through the graphic settings. Now, a lot of this is going to be similar to my NW3 video, but this is for the people that are only playing Warzone that didn't want to spend the money for multiplayer or anything like that. So here we are. This is my display mode settings right now. Uh, I do play on 1440p. I do play on 240 hertz. And this is just kind of the, uh, the display settings that we're rocking with. My brightness, I want to say, is 55. Yeah, I would do 55 anywhere from 50 to 60. And that also depends on what monitor you're using and the brightness of your monitor, too. So that could be a little bit more of a personal preference. But then you keep scrolling down here. Uh, I am on on plus boost now. I was just on on for MW3, but I felt a lot better with on plus boost. So I have on plus boost, eco mode, custom, have both the V-Sync menus off frame rate unlimited and then focus mode 90 and then obviously i have hdr turned off and that is your display settings moving over to the quality settings now we have the graphic preset at custom at the 100 percent uh render resolution make sure this is at 100 so your game looks crisp and then of course you have the upscaling and sharpening so i play on fidelity cast and now my fidelity cast on pc i would do 90 which is right there you can kind of just figure it out anywhere from 80 to 90 you'll be pretty much fine but i do 90 on my pc settings and then keep scrolling down. You just have the VRAM scale target at 80. Uh, I had it at 90 earlier and I was kind of running into like just weird lag. I don't know. I didn't like it. I felt like my game felt off. And then when I put it back to 80, I felt good. So I put it back to 80 there and then kind of just rolled with that. And then obviously variably rating shading off, uh, DLSS off. And then here is the good stuff. So this is the quality stuff that I was kind of saying in the beginning of the video, you want to make sure your game doesn't look like just terrible, but at the same time you have max FPS, depending on the build that you have for your PC and depending obviously on what you're working with this is all going to depend on like you know what you want to do here so if we're going for max FPS we can turn this all the way to very low or put it on low basically and you will get a boost of FPS which is going to help you but I have a pretty good PC so I normally play at this at normal or high just because I'm still getting over like 200 FPS when I'm playing around Warzone right now anyway but again, I would recommend anywhere if you can get it to normal where your game's going to look uh, just not as just just awful and blurry and terrible. But you're also still going to get some good FPS. So I would do normal or low uh, if you have a really bad PC and you're just trying to make it work. So you can obviously just play the game at the highest FPS and you don't care what your game looks like. You go very low. And that same concept is going to go for these ones that say normal. So the texture filter, I have a, on normal. You can probably do low as well. Depth of field, you definitely turn off. That setting is terrible in every regard. I see a lot of people that forget to turn this off, and it just it it, it blurs the outer re the out of focus regions. It's just terrible. It's just awful. Never use it. It's it's also it affects your aiming. It's just it's just don't do it. And then of course you keep scrolling down here. Detail quality level. I also have it normal again, just to kind of bump it up. You can put that on low if you really want to. I just like trying to make my game look as nice as possible with also having some decent FPS. Now particle resolution. This is um supposed to be at very low even if you have a good pc keep this at very low as you can see right here on your screen yeah you want on the left side which is right here that's when it's very very low on the right side is when it's obviously at the highest setting that's just more clutter on your screen you don't need that please just take that out you don't need that it's awful it's just something you just don't need period bullet impacts are nice just for recoil control you can turn them off but like when it comes to recoil control and learning how to aim which i just posted that video if you want to go check it out on my channel then you should definitely have bullet impacts on so you can learn your recoils. Persistent effects I do have off. Shader quality is now a big one. Now this is going to probably be the best to make your game look as good as possible and uh, just overall make the beauty of Call of Duty like kind of just stand out. But at the same time, it would hurt your frames if you have it on high. So if you don't have the best PC, you can probably get away with normal and if you or medium. And if you don't really care, again, put it on low. But I would recommend medium. Uh, if you have a relatively decent PC, but if you're just trying to make it work, put it on low. I have it on high to make my game look as good as possible. I love it. And now moving on, on texture demand, streaming is off. Uh, local texture streaming quality is low. And then you go down here to the lighting and it's the same thing. Shadow quality, you can put it on high or ultra, kind of put this on. I would recommend trying this out just to see if you really care about the shadows and stuff. Shadows are nice though to have just in general, because if you have those qual the shadow qualities on, you'll actually be able to see some shadows here and there in some certain spots. Nothing too crazy though. So I have that at normal. Again, if you want to lower it down for max FPS, that's exactly what you do. Screen space shadows off, ambient inclusion off, off, low, and then you keep moving. Tessellations off, uh, volume extra quality off, physics quality, weather grid, and all this stuff. Just take it off. None of this matters. And honestly, I don't even think this, this makes your game look better either. So all of this stuff just completely 
put it at the lowest setting or turn it off because you don't really need any of that to make the game look good. And honestly, seeing in the water so far with these settings, I've had no issues with. So that's really, really good too. Now, the last part of the graphic settings here is the field of view. And this is all also really important for your aim. I play on 120 FOV. When it comes to aiming, you don't need to play on 120 FOV, but the wider your FOV, the less visual recoil you are going to have. So I have it on 120 right now. I do like it. But if you do struggle with not being able to see people, then you're definitely going to want to make sure that you lower it to like something like I would try 110. And if it's still a little bit much for you, I would try to go to 105. I would think that's a pretty good sweet spot for a lot of players that are playing that are just trying to have some fun casually and all that good stuff and uh, still be able to see people. I would test 105. But if you want to be as cracked out as possible and see as much as possible and still have less re uh, visual recoil, 120 is the FOV for you. ADS is definitely affected. I don't recommend anyone playing on uh, independent when you're playing on such a wide FOV. Uh, independent is more if you're playing on like the 90 FOV and even lower, like 95 or 90 and lower than that. But you don't really need that. And it's definitely uh, jarring when you aim in and you just like super zoom in and then you have even more visual recoil. It just kind of hurts you. So I would play on affected. Uh, definitely keep weapon field of view on wide. You want your gun to be smaller on your screen. And then you keep scrolling down here, take your, take off your motion blurs, take off your film grames. And then this first person camera movement is probably the most important setting I would recommend when it comes to aiming and just quality of the game. If you have it at 100, every time you shoot your gun, your screen is going to be going insane and it's just not what you want. I don't even know why they default that to 100%. It should just not even be a setting and they should just always have it at least at 50. So that is what you should be doing for your graphic settings. Now we're here onto the controller settings. I know I just posted a how to aim better and all that stuff like the pro players and that. I did a very in-depth uh, explanation about all these controller settings. Uh, so if you really wanna go into detail of like dead zones and what they do and all that stuff, go to that video on my channel. Uh, but if you guys wanna just like run through these controller settings and just copy and paste these or just whatever you wanna try what I'm using, Go for it. Aiming input device. I play on a controller. Edit button layout is going to be tactical. I do not play flipped. I use a PS5 controller, so I do not play flipped. Um, and I don't have my bumper ping on as well. Stick layouts default. Uh, controller vibration. I always have that off. And then your dead zones are going to be right here on your screen. Uh, I do think the left stick maximum is a very important setting that a lot of people skip over. But again, I'm not going super in depth about that. If you want to learn more about all that stuff, watch the how to aim video. It'll help you out tenfolds. But here it is. All you need to know when it comes to your dead zones. Now, swapping over to the aiming, I play on horizontal stick sensitivity 6 and then vertical 6. Uh, and then the ADS multiplier not, uh, 0.9 just to slow down a little bit for those longer range fights in Warzone. I do think it helps a lot. So I would recommend trying something out like that when it comes to aiming. And then everything else, my sensitivity multipliers, I don't touch. Uh, and just scrolling down here, aim response curve, I do try. Uh, I do play on dynamic. I like dynamic. It helps me out. Uh, I'll explain more on that in the other video. Target aim assist, very important. Aim assist type, I do play black ops. And then nothing else too crazy here. And then the last set of settings for your controller is going to be gameplay. I do not use automatic tactical sprint. I like the fact that you were able to walk forward and be able to like, you know, shoot from the hip while you're walking forward. And if you switch this tactical setting uh, of behavior setting to single tap to run, it's basically auto tax sprint anyway. Instead of having to double click the tap sprint, all you have to do is click it once the tax sprint anyway. And most people that are using ATS or automatic tactical sprint are clicking in their stick anyway. A lot of people do that just like by default. So I, I think uh, ATS can kind of hurt you and single tap to run does what ATS does, but even better. So I think single tap to run is just more advantageous overall in general. So that is what I would recommend on that. I would turn all these mantles off. Uh, I do have this on slide only. Now I've been playing Warzone now for a couple days. I haven't found the need for myself to dive at all now if you're a vondel player and you want to go rooftop to rooftop with the, the with the uh dive to you know dive to rooftop power shoot stuff you probably want to play on uh tap the slide so then you can hold the dive and have it like an option of both um but right now i'm playing on slide only i haven't felt the need to do any of that and i love it but again you can try uh um, tap the, tap the slide and kind of figure it out from there so i i recommend slide only but it's really kind of a preference of how much you care about diving i personally don't and then everything else is right here on your screen. We got the aim down sight behavior, change all that stuff and nothing's too crazy. And just keep scrolling down. This is a big one right here. Prioritize interact. This is nice because you want to make sure when you're hitting, uh, when you're looting something, you're just tapping square instead of holding it or tapping X on your controller on your Xbox controller instead of holding it. And then if you want to reload, you can hold square or X to reload. It makes looting a lot more smooth and just simple. Uh, it's definitely going to help out your quickness of closing doors, opening doors and all that stuff too, and getting in and out of vehicles. So I recommend uh, putting this on prioritize interact. 
uh, apply all for the plate behavior. And then everything else here, if I'm not, uh, not incorrect, yeah, everything else is pretty simple. So I'm going to run through that one more time. Here you go. And then we're going to move on to some audio settings. Here we are on the audio settings. Right now I'm playing on home theater. Um, I think audio right now in Warzone 3 and Warzone in general is a little bit off. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't sound as good as it did in some other games. Uh, I have the tuning that is from Art is War. He is an incredible uh, audio tuner. If you want to watch his channel, he makes the best audio tunings ever. So I'm giving you these settings videos. But if you want to get super in depth about audio, you go to Art is War's channel and he will show you everything you need to know about it. It will be in the description below. But that's what I'm rocking right now is home theater. Also headphones, bass boost. I do love too. sometimes I kind of go back and forth with that. And then my master volumes. Here you go. And then, of course, you have your voice chats and all this stuff. None of this is uh, anything too crazy. Uh, just my overall settings for this is kind of what it's looking like. So, again, nothing too crazy with the audio settings. If you want to kind of really go in depth with something like that, I'd go to Art is War's channel. And then the last thing I'm going to show you guys that's actually kind of important is your interface settings. So some of these things don't really matter that much. But your color customization is going to help the game look nice. Um, your HUD color palette, you can change it to whatever you want. I play uh, uh, Tritonopia. And then if you go down here, color filter, if you put it on the two, and then you put the intensity at 100 and you put it on both, it makes your game just look a little bit better with the colors. And I personally love the way it makes the game look. So I'd recommend that. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you guys, one of the most important things when it comes to settings, and I kind of saved it for the end of the video on accident, but here you go, your HUD bounds. Guys, bring this all the way in. You have to bring the HUDs as close as possible. And the reason why is because it is easier for you to look at your minimap. And minimap is everything. There is red dots on the minimap now. If you shoot an unsuppressed weapon, it gives you all the information of what your teammates are looking at, what your teammates are calling out, what your teammates are pinging, where the enemies are pinging, and anything else you need to know on the top left of your screen. The farther it's up to the left, the harder it is for you to see, or you have to look farther away, away from the center of your screen where you're actually aiming. So make sure you bring the HUD bounds in all the way. And make sure your minimap is in a square setting and not a circle. I can't believe the amount of people I've seen have their minimap as a circle. I don't know why you would ever do that. It makes the minimap smaller. doesn't make any sense. You should never do that, ever. So put it on square. It makes it a little bit bigger. And then make sure the minimap rotation is on. I think this makes it a lot easier to read the minimap. If for some reason that confuses you, you could turn it off. I just think rotating minimap with the way you're looking and stuff is really, really nice. So... These settings here are also really, really good to help you. And then the last thing is crosshairs. Um, I have the center dot on, so the center dot is always on your screen. I think it's very, very helpful. And then you could put these on static. I actually don't mind the bobbing crosshairs, but it does bother a lot of people. So you can put these on static too if you want your uh, crosshair just to kind of stay, you know, stay static in the center of your screen. I don't mind. Bruh. So yeah, that's basically uh, how you see the Call of Duty servers go down in the middle of my video. But that was literally the last setting, so we just got the video done uh, right in time. But yeah, that's every setting that you guys need to know when it just comes to max FPS, controller, a little bit of movement, some audio stuff, and then the interface stuff to help you out with the minimap. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as always, it's been your boy Crowder. I'm here to help you guys out, and I will see you guys next video. Peace.